motivate someone to spend over 3,000 hours building a boat such as this? Well, yes, there is a considerable cost saving over purchasing a finished boat. There is also the fact that one can personalise it to one's own preferences. But most of all, it's the anticipation of being able to get out on the water to fish, to cruise, loaf, socialise and explore. Today we're heading 23 nautical miles out on the Pacific Ocean to an extinct volcano called Mare Island. Hopefully this day is typical of many more to come and those hours of fibreglassing, sanding and fitting out will be but a distant memory. Join us for the Mare Island experience. Hello. Hello. This is my granddaughter Kylie and her partner Tana and they are joining us today on this outing. Come aboard. <laughs> As we approached the island, we were engulfed by literally hundreds of dolphins. Perhaps this was their way of welcoming a new boat to their domain. They frolicked around us, eyeballed us off the bow, and joyfully led us right to the southeastern anchorage of Mare Island. The rules about approaching sea mammals in New Zealand are very strict. We kept the drone above 150 metres and zoomed in, but the mini dolphin around the boat simply refused to move away. This beautiful spot is South East Bay, Mare Island.
The building you can see over there is the old um, Tauranga Game Fishing Club building. Um, there's quite a few buildings that have been removed. There was a gantry for weighing the fish um, further over to the left. But nowadays there's a Department of Conservation camp over there that you can pay your money and stay there. But you um, have to get a ride out here of course because it's 20 miles out at sea. I like the name of that boat, Pay Wave. <laughs> <laughs> Mare Island is renowned for its fishing. From way back in the 1930s, 40s and 50s, anglers came from all over the world to sample the game fishing. Black, blue and striped marlin abounded. In the early days, a dozen or so charter boats plied their trade here, with clients shacking up overnight in the fishing club cabins ashore. The evening reverie was pretty wild, as could be imagined. In 1991, the Tauranga Game Fishing Club moved to the newly built club rooms ashore next to the marina. By then the influx of blue water trailer boats and modern fast privately owned launches changed the fishing landscape forever. Today's trip might be a shakedown cruise but we still plan to have fish for dinner tonight. We'll try for Cherokee in 70 meters of water. Once there was a time when any fish oh, yeah. daring to use an electric reel was deemed a wuss. Call me a wuss if you like, but reeling fish up from 70 metres is too much like work. Cool. Yeah. Well. So what do you think of this place, Kylie? I love it. Yeah. What's the highlights so far? Dolphins. 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 And lots of dolphins. Yeah, Kylie's right, right into whale watching. Mm -hmm. and like whale photography. She does a lot, yeah. Yeah, whale photography. Got to try it on dolphins, which is very cool. <laughs> and you got some really good shots here mm -hmm. earlier, didn't you? Mm hmm. Like, Insert them here. Yep. <laughs> well, here are a few of those shots. Yeah, they are. No. Right in this corner, here they are. <laughs> Right, we've stopped here to try and catch some terakey and I'll show you what a terakey looks like as soon as we catch one, if we catch one. They have very small mouths so we use a very small hook, small piece of bait. And we're using squid for bait today. So we'll just get on the spot and then we'll drop the lines overboard and see what comes up. That one just dropped yep, it? Yep, there you go. Right, and just keep going until it stops running out. It's all good? Yep. How far away is it? Yeah, 40 meters to go. This guy hopes it's for him. He's he's ready, he's excited. It is a Karaki, yes. Oh, oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. Right, you can see how small his mouth is. 
but they're one of the best eating fish in this country. Okay, he's only small to medium size, so we'll see if we can catch a bigger one. It's like Ika. Ika's got that, it's like her eyebrow. And I'll also check our position, see where we're going. A tarragi, wind him up, wind him up. Right, and yeah. a, lift him up, lift him up. And another thing, is that a good? Uh, it's a perch. perch. Where did he go? I yep. got two. I win, Tana. Tana, Tana. That other thing we call it a bucket mouth. We don't really want them. Yeah. We have gathered. The bird family. Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> it's a marlin. Push the lever up a little bit more. One? The one that's winding it. Oh no, don't. <laughs> You got one too. Oh, they're going off everywhere. Who's going to win? Right, 17 metres left. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. Ah, uh, nice. Tear. Oh, he's a good one. Yeah. Net him, Jeanette. Net him. Yes. Well done, Kylie. <laughs> what do you got on there, Tana? Starfish. Starfish. <laughs> <laughs> what have you got? 20 meters to go. Hard work, isn't it? Oh, terrible. I'm sorry, it's abandoned. Oh, it's not Oh, he got off. He got off. Oh. Uh. Was it really a terrakeet? It would have been. Good one, that one. Oh, look at this. Hey, what's that? Something's had a go at him. Yeah, barrac yeah. Yeah. yeah, barracuda or a shark have had a His go at him. This thing's got a hole in it too. Yeah. Well, that's probably what happened to yours, Tano. Got snagged on the way. No, a barracuda or a shark got him. Oh. <laughs> we have stopped in Crater Bay, which is on the eastern side of Mare Island. And if you have a look over there at those grey cliffs, we'll send the drone up and you'll see what's on the other side. There you have it, a massive three kilometer wide collapsed crater, now overgrown with vegetation, bar two lakes sighted in the deepest parts. The island we see is just the cone of a volcano that extends to the sea floor some 500 metres below. The last eruption occurred over 6,000 years ago, although the last lava flows are dated to be between 500 and 1,000 years old. This island is now dormant, but closely monitored. Just 80 miles away is another volcano, White Island. This one is very active. In 2019, just five years ago, 22 adventure tourists tragically lost their lives when it erupted without warning. The landscape on the northern end of the island is spectacular. Sheer rocky cliffs are frozen in time. There are caves, tunnels and arches created when the softer lava spewed up by the eruption 
has been eroded away by 6,000 years of wave action. The yellow mark is seen on the foreshore marks the western end of a no fishing marine reserve. It extends a nautical mile out from the island and occupies most of the island's northern coastline. We've had a good look at Mare Island, but what about the boat? Alas, and much to my crew's delight, the Pacific Ocean on this day stayed as calm as the proverbial mill pond. A sea trial in rough water will have to wait for another day. Are we ready to grab it? Make of a uh, the local pilot boat. It's going to go. Oh, it went. <laughs> oh, end of that trial. Meanwhile, all systems on board have been exceptional. Battery management is faultless. I'm very satisfied with fuel economy, though I must admit it's been hard to find a similar boat to compare with. Fishability, for me it's spot on. Game fishing, been there, done that, so no need for fighting chairs, outriggers or robust rod holders. I deem it the perfect boat for an oldie. Easy to move around, outboard servicing is simple, and dockside maneuverability a dream but then perhaps i'm just biased thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed the series